Hi, I'm Rick Standiford with University of California Cooperative Extension, and I'd like to talk to you today about how developing a management plan is the first step toward becoming a responsible forest steward and identify some ways that you can get started. Being a forest steward means that you are a careful manager and protector of your land, but often for only a brief moment in time. Your land was here long before you arrived and will be here long after you're gone. What actions are you taking today that will affect the future of your forest 10, 20, or 100 years from now? You know, the state of the forest currently, uh, I think, is much improved because a lot of our timber units have actually grown to what we're seeing here today from a very cut over area. And every um, uh, time we, we put a, a plan together, uh, the, the whole purpose of it is to go in and actually remove trees so, uh, that are of lesser quality and leave the, the quality trees, the three trees that are going to thrive and actually create as much more diversity as possible. It's a huge advantage to have that plan because it forces you to lay down all the work you're planning to do. We had to submit designs for our bridge replacements. We're standing on one of those right now. Uh, we had to plan out a road network. And so you're forced to just sit down and plan everything out. Um, at the same time, while we plan some new roads, we decommissioned old roads. And so it, you've got to plan for all that. And it's good to do it all at once. You might be wondering why you need a plan at all. Why not just let nature run its course? Well, certainly that's one approach. It's called passive management. But what's often misunderstood about this approach is the fact that California forests are no longer natural. They've been highly modified by human practices such as logging and fire suppression. Many of today's California forests are prone to insects, disease, and risk of wildfire. Managing your forest helps to achieve a healthier, more natural forest for wildlife habitat aesthetics, timber, safety, or whatever goals you might want to achieve. So how do you get started? Well, like any journey, you've got to determine where you are now, where you want to go, and how to get there. Well, I would highly recommend that they get in, in um, contact with their local uh, NRCS or the conservation service people in their locale and actually go in and just sit down and talk with somebody there about what programs are available and uh, what they may be what may be the best fit for them. Getting involved with those people would probably would be my first uh, suggestion if they do not know a good forester. Your forester is your primary person they have the contacts for a number of different people, uh, biologists, uh, archaeologists, uh, you name it, it. You know, I mean, they are your primary resource person. Everyone should remember that. The landowner, it's, it's their property. So they need to set the tone for what's happening. So what's going on here, obviously, is a, is a wonderful situation. There's a long family history here. There's a passion about their property. Um, you know, as registered professional foresters, uh, when we come onto someone's property, it's like we're walking into their, their living room or their kitchen. It's more than just, you know, hey, it's a job. Uh, it's, it's getting to know them personally and getting to personally know their, their property. Well, I'd recommend, you know, go out, get some recommendations from people that are doing forestry um, or they're somehow connected to, in the forestry world. Um, and then it'd be good to go out and see their property and see what they're doing. And you'll just get a feel for different people have different styles and hear them talk about their projects. Other landowners are a great resource. They've been through the process, so they'll, you know, they can refer you to contractors to do the work and foresters and you know, give you some tips on the agencies who you want to be working with there. Well, my first recommendation, I think, would be to uh, see if you can apply for uh, cost sharing to develop one of these smaller plans that won't, won't enable you to do timber harvesting on your property, but will give you a foundation, uh, which is what we did here in order to develop a, uh, a non-industrial timber management plan or a timber harvest plan later. It also gives you, again, the, the opportunity to get some cost sharing money to do important things on the property that aren't related uh, directly to timber harvesting, but still uh, are really important as far as forest management. So that includes planting trees, uh, thinning trees, 
um, creating shaded fuel breaks to protect the property from, from wildfire, those kind of activities, and a lot of uh, cost sharing, um, importantly, in terms of the roads uh, and getting erosion control uh, and erosion controls down on the property. Maybe you'd like to get started developing a plan for your forest, but you're worried about the cost. Well, right now, there's money available to assist landowners in working with a registered professional forester to create a management plan. You can find out more about these funds by talking with the local CAL FIRE and Natural Resource Conservation Service office or your county cooperative extension office. Watching your vision become a reality is a fun and rewarding experience. And deciding to start with a management plan is the first step toward becoming a better steward of your forest for present and future generations. Every management plan should be a living document uh, because your, your goals and objectives, while they may stay the same, they also may change over time. But more importantly, uh, the land is a living land things change. There's uh, insects, there's bugs, there's uh, other natural events that could happen that would you know, change what's going on with your property. Um, if you're in the marketing of your products, the markets change from year to year or from decade to decade. So what you may want to manage for today may be different than what you want to manage for in 20 or 30 years. You know, you were asking me um, how, what I feel about this property and it's, it's it's been a part of uh, my family now for well over, you know, 70 years, and um, kind of hoping to make it to 100. But, <laughs> but you know, it's 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 very precious, and it has many many attributes that uh, are absolutely lovely. And I'm just I am very grateful to be a part of the process uh, in uh, achieving uh, the improvement to the property and seeing it evolve.